Hey folks, uh, this lesson is select and draw conclusions from samples, this Algebra 2 lesson. So, um, uh, talking about uh, margin of errors and other groovy stuff. So, sorry about this, you guys. This is a, a writing heavy lesson if you're in my class, you guys. All right. Okay, so a population, you guys, is a group of people or objects or bugs or whatever. That's what the objects is uh, that you want to uh, collect information about. So, uh, when it's when it's time consuming or too time consuming or too difficult or too expensive uh, to survey your entire population uh, then what we do is we get a sample so we can get information from a sample or a subset from the population uh, so instead of you know say we're doing a, uh, a poll on uh, you know the president's race and we want to poll the whole United States well we can't uh, poll everybody in the United States it's impossible um, but so they take samples is what they do, and they use those samples to to make some um, uh, information gathering with that, and and make some generalizations about the the whole entire population. So here are some methods of selecting a sample. Some are good, some are bad. So most of them are bad. So. So a self-selected sample is when members of a population can volunteer to be in the sample. That's typically uh, that's typically not going to give us a good sample of the population. So, uh, but a, that's what's called a self-selected sample where people volunteer. So any kind of volunteer thing is typically not a good sample. Uh, technique. A systematic sample is better uh, where you get a rule, a rule that's used to select a member from a population such as selecting every other person so uh, or just you know some kind of generalized rule that is a better one right there so a convenient sample is typically not a good sampling idea but but you know sometimes it's you know you know, feasibly, the only way you can do it uh, in a short amount of time, but it's not as good as what's coming, you guys. A convenient sample, it's easy because it's easy to reach members of a population to be selected, such as, uh, you know, you're selecting those in the first row. Well, or how about this? You go to a, uh, a grocery store to interview people. That's nice and convenient. And, and, and you know, if you're interviewing people that, that look friendly, you'd probably you'd be more inclined to interview those kind of people. You probably wouldn't want to interview some big burly guy that looks mad at the world or, you know, something that just looks a little shifty. That would be convenient sampling. So here's the best way, you guys. A random sample is where each member of a population, every member in the population has an equal chance to be selected. That is the best way. All right, so identify the type of sampling described uh, to survey college baseball coaches about making wooden bats mandatory. Okay, so so conduct only those coaches that are on your cell phone. Well, what kind of um, uh, sampling is that? Well, that's convenient sampling because typically um, uh, it's not a good way to get a sample of your entire population. And, and that's convenient because you're only using the ones that you know, that you know that you have uh, nice and convenient in your cell phone. Okay. How about mail out surveys to all the coaches and use those that are returned as the sample? Well, those are being returned are the ones that are volunteering right there. So that would be a self-selected sample as the coaches choose whether or not to respond on that. They're volunteering whether or not to respond. Okay. So you have some questions like that. So in order to draw accurate conclusions about a population from a sample, you want an unbiased sample uh, to give uh, the most accurate picture of your population. So a sample that is either overrepresents or underrepresents your population is considered uh, biased. So it'd be a biased sample. So tell whether the sample is biased or unbiased and explain. All right, you want to know how often uh, people in Fair Oaks go to concerts. So you go ahead and ask 50 people that are standing in line at a rock concert. Well, is that is that uh, biased or unbiased? Well, that's totally biased, you guys, because people in line for a concert are going to be more likely to attend concerts than people in general. Okay, so like my grandpa, you know, I don't, my grandpa's not around anymore, but your grandpa probably doesn't go to concerts anymore. I don't go to concerts anymore. It's just um, uh, <laughs> I go to bed a little earlier than those rock concerts, but I did when I was your age. 
Uh, okay, so how about this? You interview people in Sunrise Mall, whether or not people in the community like to go shopping or not. Well, that's still biased, you guys, because people you're interviewing in front of a shopping mall are, are not uh, typical to people in general. So people that are in front of a shopping mall probably are there because they like to go shopping. So that's not giving you the general population. I don't like to go shopping, and you wouldn't see me there, so unless I'm there to escort my wife around. So she likes to go shopping and asks me. She, she'll say... You mind if we go to J.C. Penney's tonight to go shopping? And you know, and I'm thinking in my mind, well, yeah, but I say no, honey, I don't mind. Anyways, uh, sorry, you guys. Uh, although there are many ways to choose your sample for your population, a random sample is preferred, like before, because it's most likely to give the best representation of your entire population. So, if you, any way you can randomize your sampling, that's the best way. Okay. So a margin of error, and I'm going to call it MOE gives limits on how much um, uh, the responses of the sample differs from the true response of the population. So whatever your true population is, whether it's the whole United States or it's the whole population uh, of your student body at your school, um, but you can't you know, interview everybody at your school, so what you do is you get a sample. And so your sample is not going to be the, uh, the, exactly what your whole school would be. So your sample, there's going to be a margin of error, and this is how you calculate your margin of error. So when a random sample size of size n is taken from a large population, then your margin of error is approximately given to you by plus or minus 1 over the square root of whatever your sample size number is right there, okay? And then so that's going to give us what's called our, our this, like our confidence interval, you guys. So if, say, p is your percent of the, of the sample that responds in a certain way, okay? So say you selected 50 people randomly, hopefully, from your school, and you found out that the average was you know you know whatever the percentage is right there then the percent of the population that would have a response in that same way would be given by um, uh, this p plus or minus your margin of error right there so here's p minus the margin of error here's p plus the margin of error your margin of error is plus or minus this right here okay so here we go let's try this you guys in a survey of 1535 people 48 percent uh, preferred brand X over brand Y and brand Z. Okay, so here's a little um, uh, pie chart that represents that. So 48% right there. So what's the margin of error for this survey right here? Okay, so we're going to do, um, so here's N right here. So so we're going to go, uh, the margin of error is going to be 1 over the square root of n. So it's here we go, 1 over the square root of n, which is 1 over, plus or minus, don't forget, 1 over the square root of 1535, which gives us uh, um, uh, square root of 1535 is 39.18. And so 1 divided by 39.18 gets us uh, 0 0.026. So our margin of error is plus or minus 0 0.026. So given the interval, uh, that is likely to attain the exact uh, population of the uh, exact percentage of the population. Okay, so what we're going to do is take our our sample population. Here's our sample population right here. We're going to go 0.48 and we're going to add and subtract this 0.026. Okay, so there it is right there. All right, so we just go ahead and add or subtract, and that's going to give us uh, 0.454 or 0.506. So that means uh, that the interval is is likely to obtain the exact percent of the population that prefers brand X over brands Y and Z is somewhere between the 45.4 percent and 50.6 percent. Okay, so that means our sample right here, this interval right here, is going to uh, obtain our true population right there. Okay. All right. What else do I have for? Oh, the sample size. Okay. So let's calculate a sample size right here. Okay. So. A polling company conducts a, a poll for a U.S. presidential election. So, how many people should the uh, people, <laughs> how many people should the people survey, or should the, whoever's doing the survey, uh, to obtain a margin of error to be at most five percent? Okay, so we're going to use our margin of error formula, plus or minus the one over the square root of n, and we're looking for n right here. Okay, so this 0 0.05 right here is going to be our margin of error. Okay, so at most, so it's going to be 0 0.05 plus or minus is going to be at most. So it's going to be um, 
this is uh, going to be less than or equal to the 0 0.05 right there. It's going to be at most. For example, I'm at most 53. That means I'm 53 or less than. Okay, so here we go. Then we're going to go ahead and square both sides to get rid of that radical right there. So when I square 0.05, it's 0 0.0025, and that gets rid of the radical. Square 1, square 1 is 1 squared is 1. Square root of uh, n squared is n. Now we'll multiply both sides by n. Okay, and then we just go ahead and divide by 0 0.0025, and we find that n has to be at least, at least 400 people right there. Okay, all right, you guys. If you are in my class, that would be your uh, assignment. Take care.